welcome to chemistry tell class today you will be learning about naturally occurrence of alkanes their uses and environmental concerns alkanes are naturally occurring in fossil fuels before we learn about fossil fuels we will learn about fossils fossils are the remaining of plants and animals in past geologic age the combined effect of heat pressure and bacterial decay has turned fossils into fossil fuels there are three types of fossil fuel first one is natural gas 98% of methane with carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide second one is coal is a solid fossil fuel and third one last one is petroleum or crude oil remember crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons or alkanes once again crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons this diagram shows the formation of crude oil or petroleum tiny sea plants and animal died and were buried on the ocean floor over time they were covered by the layers of sediments and rocks over millions of years the remains were buried deep and deep and the enormous heat and pressure turned them into oil and gas so today oil manufacturers drill down through the sedimental rocks to reach the rock formation of oil and gas this diagram shows how crude oil is formed from oil well remember crude oil is not an infinite resource it's a finite resource it means once crude oil is over it is gone for ever so we don't have any use of crude oil itself unless it is being refined at oil refinery crude oil is refined by using fractional distillation this diagram shows the fractional distillation of crude oil crude oil from oil well pump into a fractionating column where at the bottom temperature is about 400 degrees celsius alkane molecule with few carbon atoms boil and evaporate first to the top of the fractionating column and separate as refinery gas then secondly gasoline as we all know petrol the next one naphtha kerosene diesel oil lubricating oil fuel oil finally bitumen you may see sequence in this diagram as you go down as fractions go down the number of carbon atom in each fraction is increasing same time the boiling point of fraction increases 50 120 250 350 we must remember not only the names of fractions but also uses of fractions refinery gas fuel for cooking petrol fuel for light vehicle such as cars motorbike naphtha raw material to make various chemicals kerosene fuel for jet engines diesel fuel for heavy vehicles such as buses lorries lubricating oil to reduce the friction between moving wheels to produce waxes polishes fuel oil fuel for ships and finally bitumen is used to construct roads and also as a roofing material we need to remember few facts about alkane molecules small alkane molecule large alkane molecule small alkane molecules which are present in these fractions and large alkane molecules which are present in these fractions so small molecules have a low boiling point light in color easy to light or burn and running or low viscosity when we consider large alkane molecules have high boiling point dark in color hard to light hard to burn thick or high viscosity crude oil is a mixture of liquids and gases these are mainly hydrocarbons molecules containing only hydrogen and carbon 
Much of the oil extracted from the North Sea is transferred by pipeline to Grangemouth, where it's refined on a massive scale. Fractional distillation separates out the useful components. Hot crude oil is fed in at the base of a tall column, which is kept hotter at the bottom than at the top. Fractions like diesel oils, which contain heavy hydrocarbons, tend to stay near the bottom of the tower. Lighter hydrocarbons have lower boiling points, so they vaporize and rise up the tower, where they cool and eventually recondense. The naphtha fraction, which is used for making plastic, is extracted near the top. So the first process was fractional distillation, in which crude oil is separated into different substances, or fractions. Different fractions have different numbers of carbon atoms. That means they have different boiling points, so they can dense off at different places up the fractionating column. The more carbon molecules, the higher the boiling point. Here's a laboratory demonstration of how fractional distillation works. Crude oil is a liquid. Many hundreds of solids and gases are dissolved in it. When it's heated, vapours are produced which rise up the glass tube and along the connecting tube to the right. The temperature of this vapour is 68 degrees Celsius and steadies there for a few minutes while it's being produced. As the vapour passes along the connecting tube, it's cooled and condensed into a liquid by a jacket of cold water. This liquid, the first fraction, is collected in a test tube. Then the temperature starts to rise again. The vapour in the tube now looks whiter. The temperature steadies at about 113 degrees Celsius. This condensed vapour collects in a second tube. Soon the temperature rises again. More vapour is given off and the temperature settles down at 165 degrees Celsius to produce a third fraction. Finally, at 212 degrees Celsius, a fourth fraction is produced. Each of these fractions are made up of different chemicals. The first fraction burns very easily and is used to make petrol. The second fraction doesn't burn quite as well. Most of this is converted into petrol by another process. The rest is used to make chemicals for plastics and detergents. The third fraction only burns with a wick. It's used to make paraffin and jet engine fuel. The fourth fraction again burns with a wick, but it makes a very sooty flame. This is used to make diesel engine fuels. Starting at the bottom, where it's hottest, the heaviest fraction with the most carbon atoms and the highest boiling point condenses first. That's diesel oil, used as fuel in diesel engines and in the manufacture of other chemicals. Next up is kerosene or paraffin, used in jet fuel or for heating, and in the manufacture of detergents. Next, naphtha, used to produce plastics. Then petrol, used in cars. And finally, at the top, where it's coolest, the refinery gases come off, including the alkanes, like methane and propane, to be used as fuel. The residue, left at the bottom, goes to make lubricating oil, grease and bitumen for road surfaces, roofing and waterproofing. Here's a selection of questions you might get about fractional distillation. Why can petrol and diesel be separated by fractional distillation? The answer is that they each have different boiling points. 
Note that for one mark, the question only asks why and doesn't want an explanation of how fractional distillation works. Here's a variation. How does the number of carbon atoms in a hydrocarbon affect its boiling point? The more carbon atoms a hydrocarbon has, the higher its boiling point. It would also be correct to say that the fewer carbon atoms it has, the lower its boiling point. And again, for one mark, the question does not want a big explanation of how fractional distillation works. Here's a more detailed question on the same subject. Crude oil consists of a large number of different compounds. Explain how fractional distillation is used to produce useful compounds from crude oil. In this question, you're expected to write in sentences about fractional distillation. There are three marks on offer here, so you need to make at least three different points in your answer. A fairly full answer would go something like this. Crude oil evaporates in a fractionating tower. The different hydrocarbon compounds in the crude oil have different boiling points. That means their vapours condense at different temperatures in the tower and can be collected as purer liquids or gases. Each fraction contains hydrocarbons with different numbers of carbon atoms, and each of these has different uses. Note that there's no need to write lots of detail about the fractionating tower itself and all the different products it produces. There's more about the production of useful organic compounds in the higher tier programme. Next, we will see what are the uses of crude oil. As we know, there are two major uses of crude oil. One is separating important fuels. The second one used as a feedstock for chemical industry, such as making plastics, fiber medications. Then finally, we come to our last part of the lesson. It's about environmental concerns. So, we all know we burn large quantity of refinery gas, petrol, diesel, kerosene and it makes two major problems in the world. One is global warming, the second one is as formation of acid rain. How it happens? So, burning fossil fuel produces large quantity of carbon dioxide which is a greenhouse gas. It means carbon dioxide gas traps heat from sunlight and increases the global temperature. The second one, burning fossil fuel produces large amount of sulphur dioxide which is an acidic gas and causes formation of acid rain. In today's lesson, we studied where alkanes are naturally occurring and how alkanes are separated from crude oil. And finally, we learn what are the uses of these alkanes and as we burn these alkanes as fuels, what type of environmental issues arise. Hope you understand and remember these facts. Thank you. Well, <laughs>